So what is swaddling? Swaddling is a binding or a bundling done for neonates and small babies because it mimics the snugness of the womb, limits the moro's reflex, makes the patient uh, and the baby feel more secure, and is traditionally done with a lot of pride by mothers and uh, nannies all over the world. While it is a known practice, let us go through how it is performed. A soft cloth is snugly wrapped around the shoulders one by one so that the child cannot bring the arms out. The end is tucked below the chest on one side. The other side is positioned by the side of the baby. The cloth is wrapped around the entire chest over the side and back. Now comes the interesting part. Both the legs are adducted together. The cloth is tightly tied around the baby with the legs in adduction and extensions of the lower limbs being ensured. And now the knot is doubly tightly secured at the knees to prevent kicking off and facilitate holding the baby with one hand. Is this hip safe? There are benefits to swaddling. For example, it def definitely helps the neonate sleep better. It aids in temperature control. It reduces the risk of sudden infant death syndrome due to malpositioning or the startle reflex or any other comorbidities. It definitely helps the child recover faster from a painful stimulus and reduces crying in infants with neonatal cerebral insults. As we know, a lot of them are premature and have a lot of problems. But the hazards of swaddling across a lot of geographies include overheating, increased risk of respiratory infections as it does not allow proper chest expansion, a subclinical vitamin D deficiency in a lot of poor population, and what is of primary concern to the pediatric orthopedic surgeon, the risk of worsening hip dysplasia, and that is why we went ahead and did this study. Are we alone in this? No. It's a universal issue if you look at cultures right from prehistoric times to now and see how some of the babies are actually cradled or mummified. We do see that this problem is all over the globe and in some cultures there is actually a ceremony as you can see in the lower bottom picture in our own country where it is taught to every member in the household. So traditional swaddling technique now is recognized as a proven risk factor for DDH by the following papers. An untreated congenital hip dysplasia study in the Navajo Indians clearly showed the incidence of hip dysplasia increasing almost up to 20% in that population where it was a mandatory practice to swaddle the infants. A recent paper from Japan has also showed that they were able to bring down the incidence of hip dysplasia from 6% to a mere 0.2% by changing the traditional swaddling practices and a similar study from Canada, which also proves the same. And a good study, uh, again, from America, where they have clearly shown in experimental rat models that this position of adducting and extending the limbs increases the tension on the hamstrings in the iliopsoas and therefore pushes the soft cartilage and worsens the exiting, existing instability in the hip. One more study from Turkey, again, which has successfully brought down the incidence of hip dysplasia by encouraging safe swaddling practices. With such a lot of talk about safe swaddling practices from across the world, let's look at what is hip safe swaddling. So we should continue to swaddle the baby, but put the hip in slight flexion and abduction as shown here. Keep the knees also slightly flexed like a little froggy and leave the room for the hips to move. This is the position which is precisely what is done for the treatment of DDH in a pavlic harness and which allows the astabulum to remodel against the centrally placed femoral head. So what was the aim and objective of our study? Now that the world has woken up to safe swaddling practices for the hip, how many in India really know about it and how many really practice it? So we initiated the study to determine the prevalent practices for hip swaddling in India to find out why caregivers practice swaddling and who teaches them actually to do so, and to assess whether pediatricians, nurses, and caregivers are aware of hip safe swaddling because they are the primary task force when a baby is born. We gave anonymous one-time surveys to three groups, pediatricians, caregivers, and nurses who ever consented to participate in the study. Each of these surveys were customized to each group, and this was done at a tertiary care urban-based pediatric maternity uh, hospital conjoint uh, 
uh, group of hospitals. 45 pediatricians participated in it, 219 nurses and 100 caregivers. The results were really shocking. While the pediatricians, 12 full-time faculty and 33 trainees were well aware of the risk of the risk factors, as you can see here, as regards hip safe swaddling, only 14% were really aware. And in fact, 58% of them routinely advised it to mothers about swaddling and almost all the time, it was the traditional swaddling which was advised. Only 31% of uh, pediatricians were aware that traditional swaddling is a risk factor for DDH. When we come to nurses, it was even worse. We asked them where the nurses had learned about swaddling. Almost 69% had learned it from the, their training. And 99% of them advised traditional swaddling still. And the duration was even large. For a few hours every day, almost 73%. And for most of the day and night, 26%. When you look at caregivers, almost uh, all of them, 94%, were handed down the traditional practice of swaddling from the family and the nurses. And where the caregivers learned about swaddling, again, was from the family and the nurses. So this forms a very important base for a malpractice which is not hip safe. 90% routinely swaddled their uh, infants and all in the traditional mode. And the duration was alarming. It was almost 10 to 12 hours a day. And the range was 2 to 4 hours a day from 18 to 20 hours a day, especially during the sleep and nap times. They started soon after birth and continued to 4.2 months, which is the time when the hip is still amenable to close reduction and simple methods and preventing later uh, hip dysplasia. So why do Indians swaddle their infants? Almost all of them do it for warmth and good uh, sleep, but a large amount of them were also under a misconception that this results into straighter limbs, whereas actually the mild virus which is there at the tibia is all physiological and nothing needs to be done about it. And awareness about hip safe swaddling was heartbreaking. Only 6.6% pediatricians 0% of nurses and only 4% of caregivers were aware that now the world is talking about hip safe swaddling. The incidence of DDH in India is quite large, as you can see out here, and it is higher when the sibling is affected. We have a large amount of papers uh, uh, supporting that. A lot of us were taught that in India the incidence is less because our women carry their children on their backs. But look at this with the new age booming with technology. It is actually advocated all over the world by social media. And no one is probably aware of two large studies from India where they have clearly shown that the incidence is as high as 7.5% in sonographically normal hips. And this is supported by literature from the world where they have also shown that in rural India and in uh, northern India, the incidence of DDH is quite high, as you can see in this slide. So we advocate potential strategies to create awareness about hip safe swaddling. It should be made an official institutional policy. We should have pediatric training for uh, nurses, pediatrician and residents, the training of mothers during all well baby clinics, and information posters displayed at these clinic and wards, and a liaison between IAP and POSI and others to develop position statements. The conclusions are that traditional swaddling is deep rooted norm in India. It's a very, very deeply rooted practice born out of misbeliefs and propagated by the lack of awareness. Training in hip safe swaddling targeted nurses and pediatricians is absolutely necessary to create awareness and a change in practices. Thank you.